To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty of our living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, and once, in which you once lived following the age of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the desires of our flesh, following the wishes of the flesh and the impulses. And we were by nature children of wrath like the rest. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. The Lord made us, we belong. Know that the Lord is God. He made us his, we are, his people, the flock he tends. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. The Lord made us, we belong to him. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for he is good. The Lord whose kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my brands and burn and build larger ones. Then I shall say to myself, Now, as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool. This night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good, and all the time. So, there are so many rich people who are poor. And so also, there are so many poor people who are rich. Again, we have so many rich people who are rich. And so also do we have so many poor people who are poor. And I say so because when we talk of riches, the immediate understanding are material goods or riches, which is appreciable. But with those who have enough materially, and are deemed to be rich, understandably, there are a good number of them who are also spiritually rich because they do all they can to grow spiritually, to store up treasures for themselves in the world to come. So they are rich materially, and they are rich spiritually. But there are some also who are materially rich, but make no effort to also store up themse for, for themselves treasures in the world to come. And so although they are materially rich, they are spiritually bankrupt. So also do we have people who may not have enough materially, but then suffice to say that they store up for themselves treasures in the world to come. So although they may have their own challenges in this world, in the world to come, they stand to gain. But if it is worse when you have not enough in this world and still makes no effort to store up for yourself treasures in the world to come. In this sense, you are materially poor and spiritually poor. So poverty or riches has its own, if I may say, diversities, which we find in the gospel reading of today. This man that was, if I may say, condemned by God was materially rich, but then his riches impeded him to believe in the providence of God. And so he believed in his own strength, thinking 
that he could do everything because he was. And it was by that fact that he was condemned. And aside that, we also appreciate that from this pericope of the gospel that we at times fall short of God's grace, not necessarily because we do not do evil or we do not do wrong. Because this man had his own treasures that he had worked for. So he had not stolen from anyone. The problem was that the good that he could do, he failed to do. That is the sin of omission. Thinking of surrounding himself with all the goods that he had accrued at him from his own sweat and, you know, enjoying it alone, even when probably there would be spoils or not, he cared less about the people who probably he could extend the helping hand to, especially the poor. And so the good or the right that he could do, he didn't do, although he had not offended anyone. This is the sin of omission. We pray in this holy mass that as we yearn to survive materially through the works we do and all that, we do not make, we wouldn't make goes out of the sins we engage in, but believe in God and his providence. And also, not reduce our faith or the virtues, our charities only, or the, our righteousness only, to not doing wrong to others, but also seek to embark on the right we can do that often we take for granted. God bless us. In trust and humility, let us lift up before the Lord our needs and prayers. As we pray for all members of the church, may the Holy Spirit help us make a joyful and fruitful witness to the gospel. And for those who hold elected office, may Jesus inspire in them a greater ability to serve with humility and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are absent from the life of the church, May the Lord encourage them in their faith and deliver them from doubt. And for this community of faith, may the calling of Christ echo in our hearts, giving clarity to our desires and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all those who have asked for our prayers, those who need our prayers, and those who have no one to pray for them, that God may go to their aid. And for all who have died, May they come to share eternal life through the mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For In the silence of our hearts, let us put before God our various intentions. Almighty God, we ask that you hear our prayers and in your great love answer them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and of human hands, that it may become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. 
fruit of divine and work of human hands, that it may become for us our spiritual friend. Prayer, my dear people of God, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord God Almighty. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gift, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with eleven faith. And it's coming in glory, we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise thee as without end we acclaim. Holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sarko ascended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, given thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be called as to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will. We will live and ruin forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold it who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be held by what you gave in this present age, and prepared for the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, 